some other physical methods by exchanging the solvent or by cooling some of them the first one is by exchanging the solvent in this case when a true solution is mixed with the excess of another solvent which is not dissolves the solution then what happens the corresponding solvent is immiscible so it forms the corresponding colloidal solution here take a simple example solution of a sulfur in alcohol that means this sulfur is uh, dissolves in alcohol but this solution when pour into the excess of water then what happens the alcohol is dissolves in water but the sulfur is not dissolved in water it forms the corresponding sol that is hydrosol of the sulfur so the solution of the sulfur in alcohol it forms the corresponding homogeneous solution but when you pour this is poured in water the alcohol is miscible in water but sulfur is not miscible in water it forms the colloidal solution of the sulfur that means here we are exchanging the solvent initially it is in alcohol and we are exchanging this into the excess of water that water is dissolves the alcohol but not the sulfur so that it can forms the corresponding colloids that is called exchange of solvent that means these are formed when the solution of is mixed with other solvent which is not dissolves the substance then it forms the sol and another process is by excessive cooling this process is used for the solvents like uh, organic that is uh, chloroform or ether or hexane this type of uh, solvents is formed the corresponding colloids by excessive cooling here take a small amount of the organic solvent like chloroform or ether these type of solutions are put into the cool water that means uh, the excess of these non polar solvents is freezing into the water then what happens these solutions are gets condensed and it forms the corresponding sol that means the organic solvents have a low melting point so they can easily condensed at the low temperatures they get condensed and forms the corresponding sols or colloidal solution and the next one is dispersion methods these are some mechanical methods that means by applying some pressure or by doing some work we can form this colloidal sols that means if any substance which are present in the large size we can broken these molecules into small pieces in order to get the size of the colloidal particles that means by applying some mechanical force we can get these sols that's why it is called dispersion methods the first one is mechanical dispersion in this type of mechanical dispersion the substance what you are taking initially it is present in the bulk amount or it has a coarse particles has coarse particles which are big in size or bigger than the suspension particles also which are have dimensions larger than colloidal particles then what happens the corresponding substance is grinded in the mill that is called colloidal mill in this colloidal mill we are grind this solution grind this corresponding substances which is having the coarse particles and we are applying this up to 7000 revolutions per each minute then the coarse particles are breaked into the smaller particles which are having the size into the colloidal solutions then coarse particles breaked into colloidal particles forms corresponding colloidal solution now you can see this experiment in this corresponding picture here this is the colloidal mill and which has a rotator which is having around the rotating speed 7000 per minute the revolutions is happened and when you mix this uh, substance which is having a coarse particles or uh, dimensions like more than the suspensions and you can show this in this picture they are grinded into the small small particles they are break into small particles and forms the colloidal solution as shown in this picture initially it does not have a large particles and now it becomes the small small particles as shown in this picture now another method for the preparation of the sols 
electrical dispersion or Bredig's arc method. In this method, we are going to prepare the souls of the metals like platinum soul or silver soul, copper or gold. These souls are prepared by this method. Initially in this method, the soul what you are going to prepare has taken into the two metal rods or you can say it is electrodes, two electrodes, the corresponding metal. If you want to form the silver soul, you have to take the silver electrodes on both sides. And we have immersed these two into the dispersed medium such as water. This is water. And this all is surrounded by the ice cubes. These are ice cubes. Then you put a large amount of the electric arc by applying the heavy voltages. This is connected with the heavy voltage. And when you apply the large amount of the current on that, these electrodes are suddenly vaporizes. The corresponding metal becomes the vapor and this vapor is suddenly cools into the water then it forms the corresponding souls. In this method the condensation of the metals will take place. Initially we have to take the electrodes of corresponding metal. In this case we are taking silver and when we apply the electric arc the vaporization is occur. In this case, by immersing these uh, metal rods in the corresponding water solution, the condensation vapors is immediately condensed into the water and it forms the corresponding metal soul by condensation into water. So, in this matter is very useful for the formation of the souls for metals like platinum, silver, copper or gold like this. Now, peptidization. Peptidization is one of the method for the preparation of the colloids. In this case, by adding some electrolyte to the corresponding precipitate, it becomes a colloidal form. That means, in this process, by adding some electrolyte, the precipitate of the substance becomes colloidal source. This process is called peptidization. So in this case what happens? Initially the precipitate of the substance is there. That means the, it is a substance which is having the suspension form. So this substantion we are adding some electrolytes. By adding some electrolytes this substance is forms a corresponding colloidal solution. So the electrolyte which is using in this case is called peptidizing agent. The electrolyte which are using in peptidization is called peptidizing agent. So, like so many electrolytes are used for the preparation of the colloidal solutions from the corresponding precipitates. Take a simple example here, formation of a FeOH thrice ferrous hydroxide colloidal solution from the FeOH thrice precipitate. In this case, we are adding FeCl3 as a peptidizing agent. FeCl3 ferric chloride act as a peptidizing agent. Initially, this ferric hydroxide present as a precipitate that is in the bulk form. It is like this. It is some precipitate is present that is FeOH thrice. And when you add freshly prepared ferric chloride to this solution, the ferric ions which are present in this solution is forms the colloidal particles around the each FeO3 precipitate. These all are ferric ions surrounded by the FeOH thrice that is hydroxide precipitate. That means the precipitate becomes colloidal size solution by adding some electrolyte in this case Fe plus 3 which is act as an electrolyte. That means the substance size is decreases to colloidal size because of the same electrolyte which is present in the corresponding precipitate it is attracted to each other and they are surrounded by the each precipitate and it becomes a corresponding colloidal solution. Now the preparations of lyophilic souls. In this lyophilic we already discussed that the dispersion phase and the dispersion medium has great affinity with each other. So this can easily prepared by simply adding the dispersion phase and dispersion medium. In this case, this dispersion phase and dispersion medium has great affinity. They are attracted with each other. 
So this can easily formed by mixing the dispersion phase and dispersion medium under ordinary conditions. Under ordinary conditions, these can be prepared by simply adding the dispersion phase and the dispersion medium. Take a simple example here: formation of the starch soil or uh, some egg aluminum or proteins. All are by adding simply the water and the corresponding substance, they can form the soils. Here, starch, which is a polymer. Starch soil can easily prepared by adding simply starch and water. It forms the corresponding starch so and also gelatin and gum. Gum also one of the soul and uh, these are reversible in nature. We already discussed about this. These lyophilic soils are dispersed, reversible in nature. That means by simply divide this dispersed phase and dispersed medium, and again it forms the corresponding lyophilic soils by simply adding the dispersed phase and dispersed medium.